Hi guys, welcome to The Blonde Avenue. My name is Margarita and today we're gonna to be talking about surgeries and procedures that I've had. I got inspired to make this video by an amazing blogger and YouTuber now called Lydia Milan. Millen? Lydia Millen? I'm sorry Lydia if I'm saying it wrong, but she's the most goal aesthetics, incredible, woman I've ever um, encountered online. She's absolutely incredible in her content and I really, really admire what she does. I recently um, started watching her YouTube channel which she's created and she does two videos per week so go check it out. And she spoke about her procedures and her surgeries which I found really, really super interesting. People don't normally talk about those and it doesn't mean that she's had a lot but she's just sharing with you everything that she has done from the top of her head to the tip of her toes. So I thought I would bring you the same kind of video and just discuss it all in one orb of video goodness. So let's get started and I hope you can watch all the way till the end to find out everything that I've had done. And before I get into it, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because I'm gonna be doing two videos per week along with a vlog from next week. So that's gonna be a lot, but it's my promise to you, so let's see how we go. I hope I don't break that promise. Meanwhile, in my house, there's two cats on a tree while I'm trying to talk to you about procedures, but let's get back into the video. Sorry about that little detour. So let's start from the top of my head. Now, my hair is naturally blonde. I was born as a blonde Russian child to a mother with brunette hair who she tells me she was very disappointed that I was blonde because she thought I should have this amazingly tan skinned brunette haired child but she got this blondie so when people tell me oh your hair isn't real how much do you dye it is it as fake as whatever i get a lot of that from men especially weird um no it is actually blonde however i do highlight my hair so as you can see there's the natural blondie blonde and then i do highlights i go to see a remington in Edwards and Co, which is an amazing salon in Kipik Street, and he is incredible. He's just changed up my hair game. I'm looking at myself in the monitor because I'm really loving it. You can't see how long it is, but there is my hair, and yeah, I'm so happy with it at the moment. He has been my hair hero. I also get great lengths extensions, which get put into my hair. There are little tiny bonds. Let me find one for you. There you go, a little tiny bond. We're getting intimate, we're getting intimate. You're getting to see into my scalp. They're little tiny bonds, which are made of keratin, which is the same thing that your hair is made of, which expands as your hair is hot and goes back in as your hair cools down when you shower or you swim, or the temperature changes, and so it allows your hair to not break and to grow and expand and just to live with your natural hair. I don't get it for length because my hair is this length. I get it for a bit of volume. So I've got a few bonds in my hair. Remington is amazing at doing that. So honestly, if you want an expert or someone to talk to, he's the great length specialist and he will do an amazing job, even if it's just to have a conversation. So I'll pop his details down below or his Instagram so you can have a chat and you know, maybe you know, just go on my Instagram actually and you can see my hair throughout. It's not an obvious hair extension job. I'm somebody who just loves to have that full thick hair. I think it adds so much glamour and so much beauty to a woman's everyday look that I have had these for a while and will continue having them. I've tried every single bond under the sun and if you want a hair extensions, my honest opinion video, let me know and I'll do it for you. But that's my hair. Um, let's move along. As far as tans go, I sometimes get a spray tan, but maybe perhaps only around four to five times a year when it's my wedding or someone's event or something like that. I've tried a few tans, but this, what you're seeing right now, oh, hello, burn. Mm, mm. It actually has tea full because I burnt it on a pan. Isn't that nice? I'm like a cook, a housemaid. That's what that says. Um, but yeah, my tan is normally what my skin color is. I don't try and change my skin. Skin is skin. Of course I prefer my skin when it's got a nice tan on it. But to be fair, I'm a little bit of a lazy puss, so I don't often do it and I don't love the smell. But saying that, I've been finding some amazing products that I think are gonna change my mind. So stay tuned and I will update you on those. And if you wanna know what products I mean, go on to last Sunday's vlog and you will see what I'm talking about. So that's super exciting. As far as eyebrows go, I go to the parlor room and they do my brows. I only do them maybe once every four months and I just pluck the under hairs underneath. I'm a low maintenance brow kind of person. I like the shape of my brows, I just get them maintained, and I like a full brow. I also love, and I haven't had them for a few months, but I love and would recommend going to a really good 
eye extension specialist and getting your eyelash extensions especially the Russian ones which are like three eyelashes in one it's insane it will change your life everything that I try and achieve is like an easy maintenance style which looks super glamorous so all the extensions that I have and the eyelash extensions and then I get a spray tan and it's like bam I'm ready to go I don't need to spend my time perfecting my look I am just set and I'm ready and wow like it's it's on so I don't have them right now, but if I find the time and if I'm in the right mood, I will absolutely get them and I recommend them. As far as surgeries go on my face, I have not had anything done except for one thing. Do you want to know what that is? I'll tell you right now. That is, I got some uh, Juvederm in my lips about one year ago. So with that, what happened is I had a really good experience with that. My lips didn't look too different. People hardly even notice because I'm a super conservative person when it comes to any kinds of procedures. And then I got super paranoid and didn't like the feeling. What people don't tell you is you can feel the product inside your lips. And I really didn't like that. I felt like I was fiddling with it all the time. I'm somebody who fiddles with my fingers or something that feels unnatural to me, I will touch it consistently. So I went back in and I had all of the product highlighted. What does that mean? That means that they inject into the product and they dissolve it with a solvent that dissolves the Juvederm. So now I have nothing in my lips, but that is the one procedure that I've ever tried on my face. Uh, would I recommend it? Yes, if you really want bigger lips. Yes, if the person is amazing who does it. But no, if you're a person who overthinks situations, who thinks too much, who is a warrior, I would not do it because you will feel the product. That's just the way it is. Even after a while, as it dissolves, it's not a permanent procedure. I feel like I've seen enough people say that you can feel it inside your lips. But if you want to do it and you aren't paranoid about stuff, go ahead. I think it looks amazing. When I see selfies of people who've had their lips done, I think they look better than the average Joe. I'm only being honest. But yeah, I got mine highlighted and I think I'm fine with my lips. They're not small, so I'm fine. Moving along. As far as my nails go, I am a complete and utter addict to shellac. I have had my nails shellac for years and years and years. My nails, I'm not gonna lie, have become slightly weak. I don't know if it's whether my nails are weak or it's because of the shellac, but I've had terrible nails my whole life. But I do shellac them. I'm a complete addict to that. Recently, I have had them acrylic. Why? Because I went to Europe and shellac, as long as it lasts, does tend to sometimes peel if you do the wrong thing, if you wash the dish or something, if you wash the dish, if you wash the dishes or you do something that the shellac does not appreciate, it might chip or peel. And I just wasn't having that when I was in Europe. I don't want to spend two hours in the salon. Do you know what I mean? Like a lot of people enjoy that time. I don't love it. I want to be going places, doing stuff. I didn't want to spend two hours in the salon uh, doing my nails. So I got acrylics and the good thing about them is that they're long, they make your hand look really elongated but the downside is is that of course they're not good for your fingers. So now I'm going to America, I might do it again just for that time but then I'll be... Oh, good morning light. Hello, good morning. Sorry for the light change but you're just gonna have to deal with it. It's actually really beautiful outside. I'm sitting in front of a window obviously. It's so beautiful. It's been raining all morning and now it's just stunning. Anyway, Yes, so I will take them my shellac, uh, my acrylics off when I come back from America, but until then I'm gonna enjoy my long nails and my big hair and I'll probably get some eyelash extensions too. As far as defuzzing the body goes, I used to go to get laser every week, uh, every month for about two years and therefore on my bikini line, on my underarms, everywhere. And therefore, my hair consistency and how much hair I have has dramatically decreased. I hardly have hair now, and I want to recommend it to people who want to have reduced hair growth. It actually works, and it does not hurt like waxing does. To me, in fact, it doesn't hurt at all. It feels like someone's just flicking a rubber band on you, which is mildly annoying, but if you're gonna be not hairy, let me tell you, you can flick me with that rubber band as much as you want. So I love that procedure. I haven't had it done for a while, again, because I haven't had myself down to the salon, but also because I feel like I don't really need it now that it's been done. I kind of feel defuzzy, and if I need to defuzz further, I just use a razor in the shower. 
And the last thing that I had done is Invisalign. So yes, I've had my teeth Invisalign after I've had braces when I was 11. My teeth journey is so epic. It's like Frodo going to Mount Mordor with Sam. I mean, my teeth are too big for my jaw, so I've had to have all my wisdom teeth removed. I had braces. As soon as my teeth straightened out and I was a kid, I was like, sick, my teeth are straight. I didn't wear the little retainers very often. And so my teeth got crowded again. At the age of, uh, just before I got married, 25 or something, I was like, I need to get my teeth straight. I need them to look good. So I got Invisalign. That journey had its ups, had its downs. It was like a dramatic movie. I was all on the phone to my friend who'd had it already. I was like, how did you deal with this? It can be quite clumpy and lumbersome, but on the other hand, you can take it out and you can feel like yourself again. I feel like anything that you can have a break from is doable. And so therefore, I would recommend Invisalign. If you guys want a video on the whole journey and how it looked and how it felt and how I had it done, please let me know. And now I'm more than happy with my teeth. I've got little wires on the back of the front and of the top and the bottom, which hold my teeth in place. And I wouldn't have swapped it for the world. And I recommend it so, 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 so highly. I've also had my teeth whitened twice in my life, which is super painful and I don't enjoy. And it just feels like someone's drilling into your brain with the acid and the, oh, I don't even know what I had it done with, but you know, it's just super sensitive, super painful for me, especially after Invisalign now, where they have to file your teeth a little bit in order to get them into place. The sensitivity level is off the scale, like stop. So now I use Crest Strip um, applicator things, which I can take on and off. I have not gone back to get my teeth whitened after Invisalign, but I'm pretty happy with the results as they are. So yeah, those are all of my surgeries and procedures that I get done and have done. I have not had any other surgeries or anything else. I was watching Botch last night and it doesn't put me off at all. I would still get something if I needed it. And I think some things can look amazing. I just haven't had anything myself personally yet, but if I ever do, I'll keep you updated just like with the lip journey. You can see that on my blog. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.